It is a pleasure to have George Soros with us at the Center on Global Economic Governance on the occasion of the panel on Europe, and we have an occasion to uh, share some views. George, I wonder if you could tell us where you see the world now in terms of global economic governance, the big issues, uh, possibly any solutions? Well, the global governance currently is entirely informal. Uh, there are no real uh, formal structures or the ones that we have, like the United Nations, are uh, largely ineffectual. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, cooperation depends on agreement. Um, and there, currently, there is some quite fundamental disagreement among the main, main, main players. And actually, it's Europe that's the odd man out mm -hmm. because practically all of the rest of the world is now engaged in quantitative easing, whereas the, uh, the European Central Bank under the auspices of the Bundesbank uh, is still wedded to uh, uh, orthodoxy, which is uh, devoted to uh, uh, fighting inflation, mm -hmm. yeah. whereas the current conditions are basically uh, conditions of uh, deleveraging and potentially deflation. Um, and uh, it's to counteract it that you have quantitative easing. And the last uh, holdout, other than the ECB, which is Japan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, has actually given up on uh, the policy that they've been pursuing for the last uh, 25 years um, uh, and uh, recognized that the economic stagnation that it brought is really a form of slow death. And there is a, a group emerged uh, that uh, were absolutely determined uh, to take some serious risk in uh, breaking it. Uh, this was the Abe government uh, that uh, campaigned on an anti-orthodox, uh, anti-central uh, bank uh, platform and won an absolute majority in the lower house. It's now following this up. And in fact, the result is that everybody expects uh, uh, quant uh, quantitative easing uh, to be uh, reinforced. And the yen has already uh, started to fall. And in uh, another major country, Great Britain, again, uh, since the policy of austerity was not working, uh, the central bank is now uh, stepping into the breach uh, with a new uh, central banker appointed, although we don't yet know what he's going to do. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, the sterling started to fall, uh, whereas uh, um, Europe is now uh, the, the only currency uh, that uh, uh, claims to make maintaining the value of the currency its sole and, and uh, uh, objective. Right. Do you expect that to change? Uh, with Draghi, who uh, replaced Trichet, already made some steps right towards quantitative easing, etc. Well, Do you uh, expect that evolution? Look, uh, Draghi is playing uh, lip service. Mm. Uh, to orthodoxy. I think in, in his heart of hearts uh, knows very well that this is a, a counterproductive policy currently. And we, at the, when the time comes, he will have no difficulty changing. However, the time has not come. Yeah. Uh, because uh, uh, Draghi has uh, done brilliantly in preserving uh, the, the, the euro. And, and doesn't want to risk it uh, by taking, a, uh, taking on the Bundesbank uh, more than it has, he has already done. 
So uh, th I think that there will be a number of uh, U-turns to come, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, uh, not immediately. It's more likely to come after the German elections, for instance, because even Germany by that time may, may realize that it's pursuing the wrong policy. You're right. I think internal debates uh, seem to suggest that. It's interesting. If we were to sit here in the late 1980s, early 1990s, everybody was talking about how Japan and Europe will overtake the United States. Now, 20, 25 years later, that has not happened. But I have a sense from what you're saying that there is a glimmer of hope that these two large economies, if the right policies were to be applied, started with the central banks of Japan and the European central banks and other uh, measures following, that they could actually take off and do better? Well, uh, certainly uh, Japan is following in Bernanke's uh, footsteps, but the really crucial uh, relationship is the one between China and the United mm -hmm. States. And China is also facing now uh, uh, and, uh, a need to change its growth model. Right. Because the model that worked, which was based on uh, ever-increasing exports and export surplus, uh, uh, undervalued currency, um, and uh, investments, uh, has run out of steam. Uh, the, the, uh, the consumption has fallen to 34% or so of the GDP, whereas in the United States it's 70%. Right. Right. And it was really household savings that were subsidizing the investments yes. that were financed by the state-owned banks that were pay, paying negative real interest rates yes. for the savings of the households. So uh, uh, that is what is no longer sustainable. So something has to change. And it's, it's a question, is it going to be uh, 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 consumption? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be military uh, expenditures? Because there are also, of course, a lot of uh, political tensions, particularly between uh, China and uh, Japan, uh, but also the islands, in the yeah. South mm -hmm. China mm -hmm. Sea and right. so on. So it could be military spending. Or alternatively, and this would be certainly my preferred uh, alternative, uh, green en energy. Mm -hmm. Because uh, China has recognized and internalized uh, the uh, climate change as a threat to China, because uh, China suffers from a shortage of water, yes. particularly in northern China, and is pumping water from South China to North China. And if the, the glaciers in the Himalayas melt, then of course you don't have the, the water in South China either. And the, 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 the uh, government, the leadership that is more far-sighted uh, than the uh, most democratic uh, leaderships is fully aware of this. So I see the chance of possibly uh, uh, starting uh, something to deal with that slowly maturing uh, issue, uh, climate change. You're right. That would be actually very encouraging because if we got the major players in the world put more emphasis on that, it would have obviously a major, major positive externality in it. There is also a change in the United States uh, because of uh, uh, Eric and Sandy and, and uh, some uh, other uh, uh, drought and so on. Mm -hmm. So the public is now ahead of the... Uh, You're right. Very much aware of that, yeah. Are you an optimist that the largest players, when we think of it, the US being and each Europe, each a quarter of the world GDP, so that's half, you add to it Japan and the so-called BRICS, we are three quarters of the world GDP, right? So if these eight or whatever players were managed to coordinate uh, actions, they would basically have the global economic governance and policy very much under control. Actually, there's, uh, I'm very hopeful 
because also Britain is in charge of the G8 this mm -hmm. year, and it has a very imaginative, very exciting program uh, that I think you'll find out about in very short time. Uh -huh. Very good. Okay. Well, that's excellent. Good. So let's hope that uh, your prediction here comes true. And thank Great. you very much for visiting the good. center, and we are looking forward to collaborating in the future. Very good. Thank you.